We all rely on farmers and ranchers, but farming is riskier than other businesses out there. Crop insurance helps farmers manage their risk. With crop insurance, farmers put skin in the game by paying premiums and shouldering deductibles. That keeps taxpayers from having to pick up the whole bill every time disaster strikes. Today, about 90% of U.S. farmland is insured, providing $100 billion in protection to more than 130 different kinds of crops. It's a testament to the program's success. Thank you for joining us for our AgriPulse Washington Week interview. Uh, I'm Spencer Chase, joined as always by AgriPulse Executive Editor Phil Brasher, discussing the week that was, agriculturally speaking, in Washington, D.C. And, and we're on the road this week, as, as you may have noticed. This is not our typical digs. Uh, Phil and I uh, joining a, a number of other uh, AgriPulse folks and uh, folks from across the country, really, at the Commodity Classic in San Antonio, Texas, the annual gathering of corn, uh, wheat, soybeans, sorghum, and growers, as well as the Association of Equipment Manufacturers. Uh, about, uh, you know, just you know, right between nine and ten thousand people here, including a number of producers. About half of the attendees are uh, are farmers uh, from across the country. And uh, Phil and I we were talking before before we pressed record here on a, on a Friday afternoon, and a lot of uncertainty hanging over this gathering. A, a lot of folks wondering what's going on with the you know the phase one trade deal. We, we've seen an agreement there, but we're still waiting on seeing purchases. We've seen the coronavirus kind of wreaking havoc globally. So Phil and we, we didn't do one of these last week, so we should probably lead with something, uh, a tweet that was sent a week ago, uh, President Donald Trump saying, you know, if farmers need market facilitation program payments or trade support of some kind, it'll be there. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, the, the trade show just letting out right now, a lot of folks walking by, very interested in the President's <laughs> comments about potential market facilitation program yeah, payments abso coming. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the President said, uh, if these trade deals don't fully kick in, was the words of his tweet, Obviously, they got the attention of all of agriculture, including the uh, 4,000, 5,000, almost 5,000 farmers who are, are here in San Antonio, um, because you know, you know there's just so much uncertainty. We've, we've talked about that the last few years, but even with this phase one deal, there's just incredible uncertainty uh, heading into planning, uh, both because of the tweet, because of the lack of uh, movement on trade, and of all things now, the coronavirus, which has shut down ports and just created, just added, multiplied the uncertainty. Right. So a lot of a lot of factors at play right now, aside from the typical the typical weather confusion <laughs> and market confusion that the farmers and ranchers are. Uh, I, I don't know if they, saying that they're used to it is the right way to put it, but it's uh, those are familiar levels of uncertainty. Yeah. And Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue uh, here in San Antonio today actually uh, addressed some of those concerns and. He, uh, he, for the last couple of years, was one to say, don't count on market facilitation program payments. Right. And then, you know, before the programs were, were even offered, said that again, you know, he said, uh, important to note, the president's tweet said if, yeah. if yep. those things were needed. But Phil, he also had a response to a question that you asked during during a media availability, uh, following some remarks that he gave to the classic, saying that, you know, he, he wants to make it clear, the MFP meant to be uh, adjust for trade, not necessarily meant to adjust for price. Yeah, that was the one thing that he said that was a little new. He was he was really trying to bear down on to farmers, don't plant, don't make planning decisions on the expectation that you'll get uh, an MFP. Um, the growers that I've talked to here have uh, tended to say it's not really going to affect their decision. They've already they're going to plant as many acres as they can. Uh, they've got their seed and so forth. But uh, Secretary Perdue kept saying, as you said, he said in the press conference, he said uh, to the farmers themselves, that if we start seeing the exports flow, but we don't see an impact on prices, that means we've overproduced, implying that that, doesn't, that would not merit an MFP. We'll see, it's an election year, yeah, how do you part, we'd, you know, how do we parse all that out, too? Right, because so. that's a, sh should there not be an MFP, that's a lot of money <laughs> the producers are going to have to make up for in terms of their bottom lines. He, I mean, he went as far as to say in his press conference that it, it changed the color of a lot of bottom lines on producers, uh, for, for producers across the country going, right. going from right. red to black. I right. mean, that's, that's tough right. to adjust for. $14.3 billion to be exact in this Lance, uh, this 2019 version of the program. By the way, if you go to agripulse.com, you can see where that money went in terms of the counties. Yeah. But that was a lot of money to, and in a broad swath of the Midwest, the Texas, uh, Mississippi Valley, California, 
big part of farm income. Mm -hmm. Another thing we want to mention, uh, some comments that uh, the Secretary made here this week, and it kind of follows sort of a week-long saga that we've seen the Trump administration looking to respond to a Tenth Circuit Court decision uh, regarding small refinery exemptions from the renewable fuel standard. Still waiting the Trump administration's official guidance on that. We're expecting to see that by March 9th officially, but uh, EPA Administrator Andrew Wheeler telling our own Steve Davies this week that that's a, it's a days, not weeks kind of thing that, that we're going to see from the administration. And uh, Secretary Purdue, basically the question is, will the uh, DOJ and EPA appeal this decision, which struck down a number of SREs, or, and has the potential to strike down many more, or will they just implement this decision nationally? And if, uh, sounds like the Ag Secretary Sonny Purdue has his druthers, they're going to do the latter and implement this decision nationally. Yeah, he made this good. He certainly strongly, I mean, basically said that uh, they are significantly, and he used extensively in the press conference, so significantly, extensively reduce the number of uh, small refinery exemptions this coming year, 31 last year. It's got to be a lot less than that, based on which, which implies that they're going to essentially take the uh, Tenth Circuit Court ruling and apply it nationwide rather than appeal it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that would put the smiles on the faces of, uh, of a lot of biofuel stakeholders across right, the country. Right, that was a big applause yeah. line Yeah, uh, a, this a, morning a very well. big applause line and you know, it kind of kind of raised some eyebrows in the press room as well because you know, that's something that, uh, you know, should should the EPA decide to do it, you know, it's there's still some, some additional procedural hurdles that will need to be cleared because, uh, you know, keep in mind that court right. case did not say SREs need to go away in their entirety. It said they need to tweak how they are awarded. So the programs, the waivers would still be there. It's just a matter of how the EPA would move forward on future applications for the program. So a lot of things to, uh, to watch for uh, leaving this convention. Uh, we've certainly enjoyed our time here in San Antonio, seeing a number of folks that we, uh, that we, you know, that live across the country. We speak with on the phone on a regular yeah. basis. It's nice to put a face to a name in some cases and speak face to face with uh, with some of the folks that out there out there uh, uh, read and appreciate and follow AgriPulse coverage across the country. And we meet some new folks as well. Meet some uh, new folks as well, for certain. So we certainly appreciate you stopping by AgriPulse.com to watch this video for Phil Brasher and Spencer Chase. Have a good one.